Now, I think this goes without saying, but before I begin, I do just want to place a huge spoiler warning for both Horizon Zero Dawn and Horizon Forbidden West. First, I'll be talking about Zero Dawn, followed by Forbidden West, and finally, a comparison between the two. Let's go ahead and jump into the video. Horizon Zero Dawn was, by far, one of my favorite games of 2017, maybe even 2018, besides Detroit Become Human, but that's another topic for another video. Don't you worry about that. We're thrown into the world of Aloy with some amazing graphics, might I add. Her childhood, her way of life, and the man who raised her, whose name is Ross, by the way, are all introduced fairly quickly. This builds a foundation for who she becomes into adulthood, which we're kind of thrown into, but subtly. Very good uses of timing and the environment in that scene, you know. Anyway, we do a lot of fighting, training, and then comes the proving. I felt awful <laughs> leaving Ross behind, but it was worth it for the sequence of events to come. Then once you think you've won the proving, these motherfuckers take that opportunity to ransack the place. Murder City? We're already there. So there's this guy named Helis. He will be brought up again, but he really wants to kill Aloy. Ross pops up to save her life, and with that, risks his. He successfully saves Aloy, but unfortunately gets blown to fucking pieces. Helis, I swear, man, I'm gonna fucking murder you, bro. Fast forward to meeting Mother Tirsa, the Elder Matriarch, which, by the way, Aloy's people, also known as the Nara, run on a matriarchy instead of a patriarchy, meaning that the women are empowered. Such a cool tidbit of information. But I really wanted to mention that. It's very cool to see in a video game, especially since we run on a patriarchy as, um, you know, Americans. Anyway, Mother Tirsa tells us the birth story of Aloy, <laughs> as well as where to find out more. So we go on a journey to find the origin of Aloy, which she's a clone of a very smart scientist named Elizabeth Sobek who literally programmed AIs to save the fucking world, by the way. Also, quick note, I love the fact that these AIs are named after Greek gods, and aptly named it that. This will be mentioned later on in the video, just to warn you, because I love that so much. But, anyway. Well, let's, let's just say, I don't really know what happens after this, besides a lot of traveling back and forth. So I'm fast-forwarding to a part that I do remember, <laughs> towards the end of the game. Elizabeth Sobek goes off to save the world or something, and Aloy learns that Sobek is probably fucking dead, and that there's this guy who is trying to ride her ass throughout this whole situation of, you know, Sobek being a badass. Ted Pharaoh. Quick note, fuck Ted Pharaoh. So Aloy goes to figure shit out and learns that she can't be the daughter of Sobek because she lived so long ago, probably even eons, if not centuries. Instead, she's an almost exact genetic copy of her, like 99.8% identification type shit. That's fucking wild. Which also explains why she's able to do so much with Sobek's likeness. Anyway, we learn that Gaia, the main deity of this game, and the next, created Aloy to save the Earth because the planet is dying or some shit. Also to renew her, because Gaia shut herself down for some reason that I don't remember being explained. So... <laughs> anyway, the game ends when we find Elizabeth's body in the middle of a flowery triangle, a very gorgeous area, and we grab her handheld cloak. Can't remember if there was an aftermath to that, so... On to Forbidden West. <laughs> so Forbidden West opens up with absolutely astronomical graphics, like holy mother of the gods. When we're thrown into the game, I truly don't remember much other than this sexy motherfucker right here. Oh my god, I love him. Smash. Anyway. <laughs> We get, sent, we get sent right into livelihood and migrating from one place to another. We're sent right into the search for Gaia, and when we get to the location where we find Gaia, we meet another clone of Elizabeth Sobek named Beta, and hot take, I can't fucking stand Beta. She'll be mentioned again, best believe. So these people, which we later learn are called the Far Zenith, just so that you know and we have a frame of reference, also... Quick note, 
They live in fucking space. That's so cool. Like, they came from Earth and just decided to live in space. Bro, the audacity. I, like, take me. Anyway, the Zeniths take another copy of Gaia, because there's two, apparently. As Beta and Aloy look at each other in confusion, I can only imagine that this is, like, looking at an identical twin for the first time, because that's what they are. They're identical twins, pretty much. So, you look at each other and you're like, no. Holy fuck, wait, that's me, but that's not me, because I'm right here. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so, once we reboot Gaia, we go on the longest fucking road trip of my life to retrieve three of her subfunctions, Demeter, Poseidon, and Ether. Ether's stage was the first, and by far the easiest, which you can choose which order that you want to play these in, but I played it in the correct order, but... Aether's stage was first, and by far the easiest, for me. Poseidon was a bit more difficult. His AI was underwater. Made some memorable buddies during this stage. Demeter was the last. I did struggle on Demeter a bit, no lie. Just because of all the uh, plant life and all that shit. Had to go back and forth for a bit, just to, you know, make some new weapons. But we retreat back to Gaia after we get all the subfunctions that I just mentioned, and she says she's able to intertwine Hephaestus with herself, which is one that I haven't mentioned yet, but it's one that will be able to do so much shit that she cannot do yet. And she needed these three subfunctions in order to get her capacity higher than Hephaestus's so that she could intertwine Hephaestus with herself. So we go to retrieve Hephaestus, but before that, we meet a, we meet a guy named Sio, which, by the way, look at this man. Smash! But he's an asshole. I'm gonna have to pass. But we'll talk about him more in a second. Anyway, we go to his island. Also, such a beautiful scene. The water, the fucking... Just the travel in that scene. Amazing. We we go there to enter Ted Farrow's solo facility. Yeah, the Ted Farrow from before. Because he made a secret rank higher than Elizabeth Sobex to get power. Like, rule the world power. He went behind Sobek's back to do that. You know, because it was a secret. So he's a complete asshole, as expected. Well, in this place, in this facility, we learn that CO thinks that he's Ted Farrow reincarnated. So, a little bit uh, far-fetched, if you will. We go in, Aloy's alone for a minute, and she learns that Pharaoh has been going through anti-aging treatments and has experienced mutations and is still alive. So when CEO hears of this, he orders one of his goons to take the fucker out. But Aloy knows some shit that they don't. She knows the place is gonna blow up the second that sexist, power-hungry asshole is dead, so what does she do but get the fuck out of there? Smart woman. We also get to see, I just want to mention this, Sio running up a fallen statue of Ted Farrow, trying to escape, and pushing one of his goons into molting fucking lava. Guys, what a leader, am I right? He continues to stand on the statue's head, which cracks under him, making him slip off. The head then crushes him to death. Good fucking riddance. <laughs> We're going back to Hephaestus real quick. Retrieving Hephaestus was probably the second hardest stage of this fucking game. Whenever we got back to the main area of Hephaestus' hideout, we began merging Hephaestus with Gaia. When who the fuck shows up other than the far zenith, goddammit. So let me bring up this fine ass motherfucker from the beginning of the video. His name is Varl, by the way. Anyway. Varl is protecting Gaia, Hephaestus, Beta, and Aloy from the far zenith. One of their goons, his name is Eric, comes down to wipe us out, and Varl, being a fucking badass, takes him on man to man. Only thing is, the far zeniths are indestructible. Yeah, you heard me correctly. So Varl's fighting this dude with his spear, and this bitch has the audacity to turn Varl's spear around on himself. My eyes, Niagara fucking falls, bro. Rest in peace, homie. In a later scene, Varl's pregnant partner, Zoe, stabs the shit out of that guy who killed Varl. 
Queen shit right there. I'm a proud uncle of that baby dog. That kid's gonna kick ass. Now, while the far zenith saved Aloy immediately after Varl's death, claiming she was changed by the sense of Aloy's focus, I'm calling bullshit. Nah. Well, she helps us defeat the far zenith by getting this sexy motherfucker from the first game back. Hell yeah, boys, we got Silence. So Silence disables the yeah. zenith's invincibility shield, and we kill those fuckers quite brutally. Anyway, you remember that girl from maybe two seconds ago? The far zenith who changed her mind? Yeah, no. She wanted to bring Aloy back into space with her. And Aloy said, Nah, fam. I got a mission to tend to, bruh. And this bitch said, Fight me then, ho. And boy, oh boy. This fucking moment right here was the most difficult fighting sequence throughout the whole game. I died like three times, bro. Very difficult. Next thing I remember is the ending. What a fucking waste. So rushed. I fought Zero Dawn ended too quickly. Boy, did I not know what was in store. Jesus damn. So quick I didn't even have time to comprehend what the hell just happened. Too fast, bro. Too fucking fast. Anyway, it's time to compare. So Zero Dawn and Forbidden West, huh? What amazing stories created by an amazingly talented team, but there are definitely things I like and things that I don't. I love the graphics, gameplay, and storytelling pre-endings. Zero Dawn is much more straightforward, but definitely had more places where I had to Google what the hell was going on. But one could take that as me not knowing enough about the game yet, and I wouldn't oppose that point, honestly. But Forbidden West has many more aspects, many more weapons, much more story, but it seems as though this game was more time-restricted, or decided to spend their money elsewhere. Which, honestly, I can't say I blame them for. I thought Zero Dawn was gorgeous, and it was, no doubt, just not nearly as impressive as Forbidden West. I mean, just look at this. Let's talk about the deaths. Deaths in Zero Dawn are dramatic, but necessarily so. It fits the narrative, especially Roth's death. It makes sense and builds the foundation for what type of person Aloy becomes in due time. Compared to Forbidden West, though, Varl's death is just a cheap kill. The only thing his death did to the story was losing a fucking amazing character. Just so his partner, who we just met by the way, could say, hey, Yo, I'm pregnant. Nothing against Zo or her baby. But I really don't think his death was justified. I really do want to see the baby though. In the end, these are both amazing games and you need Zero Dawn in order to understand an exorbitant amount of context for Forbidden West that isn't comprehensible otherwise. Would I play these games again? Absolutely. Would I recommend these games to others? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. I truly enjoyed these games, and making this video as intimidating as it was to worry about missing important details, and I realized that this is an overview, not a frame-by-frame -frame analysis. So I do apologize if I missed anything that I didn't deem as majorly important for the baseline story and comparison of this video. You can always let me know in the comments, though. I hope you all enjoyed watching, take care of yourselves, and peace out, my fellow Rainers.